What's up guys, back with another educational video. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm. Literally just comment for the algorithm. And also make sure your notifications are turned on so you actually get notified when I make a new video because you know how these social media companies are. They love to suppress good stuff and they love to promote BS. So if you want good stuff, make sure you got the notifications turned on. Now, this week we are talking about low carb diets and their effects on testosterone and cortisol. Now this comes up because there was a brand new meta-analysis in the Journal of Nutrition and Health on the effects of low carb dieting on testosterone and cortisol. It was pretty cool how they did the meta-analysis. So obviously they searched for studies that used low carb diets versus higher carb diets and they made sure there was at least a gap of 20% carbohydrate intake with a maximum carb intake of 35%. And actually most meta-analyses define low carb as 40%. For example, if a study was comparing a 35% carbohydrate diet, it would have to be a comparative diet of at least 55% carbohydrate. Now some people may say, well that's not low carb enough. They included other studies that would have been much lower carbohydrate, but you have to understand the more tight you make these constraints to put into a meta-analysis, the less and less studies you're gonna get and the less robust the results are going to be. So I actually really like the way they did this meta-analysis. Uh, the other thing they did was they made sure there wasn't a weight change of more than three kilograms. And they said that was because it's been shown that uh, low carb diets can induce up to a kilo and a half of water loss, even without changes in body composition. Although technically losing water is lean body mass, we're talking about kind of like muscle versus fat mass. So I like the fact that they made sure that there weren't big changes in weight uh, because weight is a modulator of your testosterone and cortisol. They've actually shown that if you are obese and you lose weight, it can actually raise your testosterone and if you are normal or lean, if you lose too much weight, it can actually reduce your testosterone. So I like the fact that they tried to keep it to weight stable folks. If they didn't report weight, they made sure that the calories were basically equal between the diets. So they did a pretty good job of controlling for those variables. They also did subgroup analyses when there was some heterogeneity where they would look at, okay, longer duration versus shorter duration. And they did a cutoff of three weeks, which I think is pretty good. The studies show that after three weeks on a low carb diet, especially with ketone production, you've kind of plateaued. I know low carb people love to say, well, low carb adaptation can take up to three months. There's very little data to support that. And most of the metabolic changes happen within the first few days and weeks. So. I thought three weeks was a reasonable cutoff time. And so they did segment into uh, short duration versus long duration. They also segmented into high protein versus moderate protein. High protein being more than 35% of calories and moderate protein being less than 35% from calories. So what did they find? Well, when it comes to testosterone, they did see a significant decrease in resting testosterone levels on low carb diets. However, a subgroup analysis revealed that this was basically confined to high protein, low carb diets, and they didn't see the same decrease on moderate protein, low carb diets. Now, what does this mean? Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what it means. The reduction in testosterone was pretty significant. I think it was 37% on high protein, low carb diets. I think it's possible to at least explain part of it. The fact that if you're having high protein, low carb, you're also gonna have lower-ish fat uh, if the protein is high enough. Whereas if you're having more moderate protein, low carb, you can have more fat. And high fat diets have been shown to possibly affect testosterone compared to low fat diets. But honestly, I wasn't expecting to see that big of a difference. And now you get into kind of trying to balance between, all right, for retaining muscle on a diet, What's more important, testosterone levels or protein? Because we know that high protein diets can help with lean body mass retention on a diet, but most people also think testosterone is important. I will say that there are very few studies that look at physiological changes in testosterone and how those affect lean body mass. 
So for example, there really aren't many studies, if any that I know of, to show that a 30% decrease in testosterone actually leads to less lean body mass. I've never seen that. It may exist and maybe I just haven't seen it. Now, we do know if you give exogenous testosterone and you jack your test levels way up, yes, of course that can build lean body mass. We also know that if you're deficient in testosterone, that if you restore to a more normal level of testosterone, that can also increase your lean body mass. But within the physiological range, there's not a lot of data to indicate between like medium and high testosterone that it makes a difference in lean body mass or medium and low testosterone makes a difference in lean body mass as long as it's still within that physiological range. I suppose if you got like at the lower end of the physiological range and then the upper end of the physiological range, it's possible it affects it, but I'm not aware of any studies that have actually shown that. So again, this is just some stuff that we just don't really know at this point. What I would say is it might be a wash in terms of retention of lean body mass and it might be due to an interaction of it being not just high protein but possibly even lower carbohydrate as well. So if you're on a moderate protein, low carb diet, it's probably not as low carb as a high protein, low carb diet because if you're increasing the protein, you've got to take it from somewhere and you're either gonna take it from carbohydrates or fats, and my guess is if people are doing low carb diets, they're probably taking it more so from carbohydrate than they are fat. That's just my guess. I can't say that that is the absolute answer. So I really don't know exactly what to make of that in terms of recommendations. Uh, I'm not ready to say that low carb diets are a bad idea because of decreasing testosterone. Uh, again, it seems to be confined to high protein, low carb diets. If you are somebody who struggles with things like libido, or you know your testosterone tends to run a little bit low, then maybe that's something to consider when formulating a diet that's low carb. Maybe you wanna keep your protein a little bit more moderate. Now, when it came to post-exercise testosterone, they didn't really see differences overall. However, in a subgroup analysis, they did see that in the short term, low carb diets pretty significantly decrease post-exercise testosterone. I know a lot of people will probably make a big deal out of this saying that low carb diets are going to impede your gains. I don't really think that short-term rises and falls in testosterone make one iota of difference to be quite honest. Based on the research we have, uh, it's much more likely that the long-term basal levels of testosterone are what matter. Short-term changes in testosterone are much more driven by energy demands uh, during exercise than they are anabolism. In fact, there's quite a few papers out there, uh, mostly from Stu Phillips' lab, showing that short-term changes in hormones don't really affect lean body mass or strength. And th those are being driven by energy demands, not for anabolism. So there you go, low-carb people. I just defended low-carb. Just make sure you remember that next time you say that I hate low-carb. Now that was in the short term. After three weeks or in the longer term studies, they did not see a decrease in testosterone post-exercise. However, it was pretty small sample size and all the long-term low-carb diets were moderate protein. So it's important to bring that up. So it could be due to the protein amount or the duration in terms of why they saw differences. So it's possible that a low carb, high protein diet done over a long period of time would still have this effect persist where testosterone is reduced post-exercise, but none of the studies with high protein, low carb diets were done long term, so we just don't have that data. Now what about cortisol? Well, in the long term, there really wasn't a difference between low carb diets and high carb diets on resting cortisol. Now in the short term, there was a pretty significant increase in cortisol, like an 80% increase in cortisol, which actually makes sense if you think about the purpose of cortisol. So cortisol will block glucose usage by muscle and adipose, which can help spare it for the brain. So after three weeks, if ketones are being generated, ketones can be used by the brain, and so it might make sense that cortisol would fall back down because now it doesn't have to be spared as much for usage by the brain since your body's generating ketones. Now, what about post-exercise cortisol? Again, we see a pretty big increase in post-exercise cortisol that persisted long-term uh, on low-carb diets. Once again, 
I think there are people who will take this who maybe are anti-low carb and say, aha, see, it increases your cortisol, you're gonna lose all your gains. I don't think that that's an accurate representation. It is the basal kind of resting amounts of cortisol that really make a difference, especially when it comes to lean body mass. Uh, Short-term changes in cortisol, like testosterone, are much more driven by energy demands. And again, uh, in some of Stu Phillips' research, uh, they showed that cortisol and the exercise-induced changes in cortisol don't really relate to hypertrophy or lack of hypertrophy. I wouldn't really be concerned about this. And, and once again, I think that this is just something for the body to try to spare glucose and use fatty acids instead and also increase gluconeogenesis, which is the conversion of uh, gluconeogenic substrates like amino acids into glucose by the liver. It is possible that this may explain why there is a little bit more lean body mass loss on low carb diets compared to higher carb diets, or also why even in a surplus during overfeeding, people on a ketogenic diet don't tend to gain as much lean body mass and strength as people on a non-ketogenic diet. Overall, I think these results explain a little bit. I I'm not ready to really make big changes to my recommendations for people about low carb diets based on these results. My recommendations remain the following. If a low carb diet is something you can adhere to and it allows you to control your calories and lose weight if weight loss is a goal for you, then I think it's a perfectly reasonable way to do things. Is it possible you may lose a little bit more lean body mass? Yes, it is. Is it such a huge amount of lean body mass that it makes a low carb diet a really bad idea for most of the population? No, I don't think so. If you are a bodybuilder who is looking to absolutely maximize your amount of lean body mass, then I think doing a low carb diet is probably not optimal for a contest preparation. But if you're somebody who just wants to lose some fat, if you lose, you know, an extra half kilo or kilo of lean body mass, I don't see that being a huge negative. I'm not saying that it's a good thing, it's not a good thing, and all things being equal, you'd be better off retaining that lean body mass, but if you know that you just you are more adherent on a low carb diet, then that still may be the best diet for you. And that is why our app Carbon Diet Coach offers ketogenic, low carb, plant-based, balanced and low fat options because we really want to give people the maximum amount of flexibility when it comes to diets because we know based on the literature the best diet is the one that you can adhere to. All right guys hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next week.